We've got uh, Justin Credible on the line, so uh, let's get to him right now. Uh, Justin, Pete Polacco, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Doing really good. Doing really good. Good. Um, I guess the first thing we should talk about is uh, congratulations on uh, on getting the championship. And uh, what was your feeling? Because I guess, I, I don't want to say you were the last one to know, but you sure didn't get a lot of uh, lead time in finding out, did you? No, not really. I was. Uh, I actually found out uh, through Lance uh, at the fan fest. It wasn't at the fan fest. The Q and A at Cyber Slam. So it was kind of funny. Hello, can I? Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear. You. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you just so you found out that afternoon. Did you? Do you have any inkling uh, that this is coming up or? Any what? I'm sorry. Do you have like any kind of an inkling or anything that uh, this could happen, or was it a total shock? Uh, no, Paul actually had mentioned it uh, a week uh, prior, but he mentioned it in passing, and uh, I kind of took, you know, I really didn't know how to take it. He'd asked me a couple of questions, kind of off the wall, and I really didn't take my, you know, I didn't want to put my heart into it. He kind of just said it in passing, and I kind of just said, hmm, that's interesting, but I didn't really, uh, I didn't put it together, and I, I really didn't think it was going to happen as quickly as it did. No, I had no idea. Did you know that he'd eventually planning on putting on you for a long time? Um, I, I he had spoken to me about it, uh, about eventually being the champion and eventually having, uh, you know, the, the Rob Van Dam chase me and you know eventually capture, the, you know, the, the title from me. That was, uh, I guess, long term plans. So I, I did have an idea that that was going to happen somewhere down the line. I just didn't know when. What uh, you know? What what are your feelings as far as uh, the different guys? Because I mean, there's a whole slew of different guys that you can face, uh, which is kind of uni- you know unique for a champ. Well, not unique for a champion now, but uh, for ECW, you know, you, you're kind of a, a good utility player in the sense that you can wrestle anyone in the company uh, just because of your style, I think. And is there anyone in particular that you're looking forward to? I'm really looking forward to Lance. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people know uh, he trained me in Calgary. He was a year and a half uh, in the business before I was. And uh, it'll just be real interesting. I, I've always looked up to Lance, and uh, it'll, be, it'll just be a real unique, real good opportunity. And I think we could really do something special if, uh, if given all the right elements, uh, if Paul books, uh, you know, interesting storyline, compelling storyline, and, uh, you know, if all the right moves are made and if I'm on and if he's on, I think we could do something really special. Because he talked you know, about staying or going. I'm yeah, we were going. We were going. Uh, ask him. What, what, what do you? Uh, have you talked to Lance in the last couple of days? And do you know where his head at as far as staying or going? Um, it, it, my impression that I get, um, and I haven't spoken to Lance since the weekend, but uh, my impressions are that uh, he's, he is staying. I think, uh, I, you know, that's all that's the indications that he's given me. I don't think he's, uh, but to be honest, I don't think he's seriously shopped around anyways. Um, so it's, it's all up in the air. I think uh, once his 30-day contract, that little agreement that they signed, once that's over, I think he's going to, he is going to, you know, exercise it. And he is going to just, you know, just to, you know, for, you know, whatever, I mean, for his family and stuff, see what he is worth on the open market. And, uh, but I think, to be honest, uh, I think Paul will, you know, will scoop him up and and Atlanta, I think, in my opinion, will remain with ECW. What, uh, as far as, like, uh, other guys in the the company, as far as doing matches with, uh, I mean, you did you did a couple with uh, Jerry Lynn over the weekend. Of course, you've wrestled many, many times in the past. You've pretty much wrestled most of the guys in the company. Mm-hmm. You, got any, you know, any other guys that you're you're kind of looking forward to being able to wrestle? Um, I'd love to wrestle Jerry again in a program. Uh, I, I, you know, I can't wait to wrestle Rob Van Dam. That's uh, that's 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 going. That's looking way down the line. I don't think I don't look look forward to that happening for at least months. You know, I mean six, seven, eight months at least. Um, and that's my indication. That's not Paul's. I mean, I'm just guessing from a, you know from my own perspective. But uh, you know, guys like Rob, guys like Jerry, I, I really want to wrestle again. I I, 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 I hate garbage wrestling and and because it, it hurt it has hurt me I think a little bit in my skill to be in there with guys that you know I'm just taking trash cans or shots to the head where I want to be in there with a guy that'll make me that'll bring the best out of me and that'll that'll push me you know and and that's what we really need and you know I think we've spoken about this before I want to be challenged not to say that I know I'm this great worker because of course I'm not and I need you know I need tons of improvement but that's what that's what you know I want it I, I want to be challenged I want to improve and, and even guys like Mikey Whitmore I had a hell of a match with him in Poughkeepsie at the TV taping, you know, and we just did a, a traditional match with a lot of near falls and, and stuff like that, a lot of false finishes, and it really 
for a guy like Mikey who isn't pushed real high on the card, and uh, for the fans, and they bought it, they believed it, and they bought into it. You know, that was I thought that was really cool and unique. So you know, even a guy like Mikey, if, if they did the right things to him, I don't know how big of a, a money program it would be, but you know, just that, that kind of style. I, I really want to get back to the wrestling and and get away from the tables and chairs as much as possible. In the last uh, ten, twelve days. Uh, there have been a lot of, quite a lot of championship changes, WWF, 2ECW, uh, w, uh, WCW as well. What are your thoughts as far as the world titles in wrestling in general, uh, value of them or no, lack of value of them, and as far as the different title changes that have taken place, say, in the last month or so? Obviously, they don't. The titles nowadays don't mean half as much as they used to. I mean, it, it, it seems that nowadays that that a title switch on television doesn't even pop a rating like it used to. Um, you know, and, and it's a shame. The WWF, I think, and, and ECW up until late, you know, up you know until the Mike Awesome fiasco, the WWF and ECW have done a good job uh, with the world titles. But even the WWF traditionally didn't switch titles as much. But uh, you know. Triple H as the heel champion I thought was, was great for them. I thought uh, he brought a lot of great value to the title because he did what all great heel champions I think should do or try to do, and that's make uh, you know your opponent, make the opponents believable that they can that they can win. And he did that with guys like Taka Michinoku, and you know the, and the list goes on and on. And uh, but you know the, the situation in WCW, I mean they've they've completely. Then I, and you know what I'm not even I know a lot of people are going to think what am I saying, but uh, I, I didn't even care about the the David Arquette involvement in WCW. Um, you know that was a gamble. They were trying to do something for ratings. I understand that, but they could have had him in there. In the picture, without having put to put the title on him, I think that was real. That just, I mean, when you look in the history books, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know if the wrestling fans of today even think like that anymore. But it, it just completely, for them to to get back what they had in the, from their world title from the days of the NWA and the Ric Flairs and the Ricky Steamboats, to get that back is going to take so long. And they've done such. It might even be. I don't, I don't think anything is irreparable damage, but it's a lot of damage and, and titles. Don't mean half as much as they used to at all, and, and that's a shame. And that's something that I would like to see all companies get back to because it, it, at one time titles did mean everything, and that's the way it should be, in my opinion, in wrestling. In in the last couple of months, there's been a couple of instances uh, involving world champions uh, basically walking out of the company, and one was one was Chris Benoit, which was a, a different situation, but he was the world champion, and he was kind of asked to leave and hand back the title. In fact, they never even they never actually even asked him to do the job, which was kind of, I think, their fault, because I can't believe that Benoit, if he had been asked and just said, you know, I think he probably would have done it, right. had it you know, been handled. But they didn't even bother asking, which to me says that that management really didn't respect its title at all. And the other one, of course, was, was with Mike Awesome, who, um, well, I mean, I mean, you know, you know, you were in the company with him, and I just thought that, like, even if he wanted to leave and, and things like that, I think he should have at least come in that last weekend and done it rather than, you know, you know, put ECW, you know, whether it's Paul, whether they had a problem with Paul, I think it kind of hurts everyone a little bit. You know, the, the, you know how he he handled his business. I guess is the way to put it. I mean, sure. showing those weekends and keeping the title did nothing for him when he debuted. I'm sorry, I can't hear that. I can't hear the comment. Brian, say that one again. I was just saying. I mean, skipping out the weekend and keeping the title and everything like that did absolutely nothing for him when he finally debuted on Nitro. They didn't mention it. He didn't have the belt. I guess they mentioned it, but didn't didn't play in any storylines or anything like that. Yeah, so, I mean, he. Yeah, go go ahead. No, I, I I think the whole gist of the whole uh, interest in him to begin with was they wanted, I think, more or less the the ECW champion, who, in my opinion, whoever it was, and I think the that the money they were giving him and whatever it was was because they wanted to to get you know they wanted the ECW title on Nitro and obviously it backfired, and and to him I guess he had to to not do you know to do poor business and that was the only way he can do it. I mean there was no way for Mike, I think, to do good business and still get the same offer. 
Do you know what I'm saying? And I yeah. think that was that was that was the thing. It's like, okay, do I do bad? I mean, he was obviously he knew he was doing bad business, but that's kind of the only way in his opinion, you know, in in the scenario that he probably could have got the cash that they were offering was for him to do bad business. I disagree. I mean, you know, he, you know, he. I don't think business should be conducted like that. But then again, I've never been. You know, I have a family now. I'm a new. I'm a new dad. I, if that money was thrown in my face, I mean, this is the real world. You know, when my bills are late and, and so forth, it's it's kind of it's it's a weird situation. But it was definitely bad business, and it and it did hurt a little bit. You know, and it did and it did do, and it did WCW no no good whatsoever. I mean, most people don't even know who Mike Awesome is. And it's funny because I was in a gym the other day, and people were talking about Mike Awesome, and Mike Awesome was just in here, and I walked right by and made eye contact with these people, and you know. And not that I'm the most recognizable face, but they have no clue, you know, me being the current ECW champion, that who I am. And, you know, but they knew Mike Awesome from the couple of appearances from Nitro. So still, I think they overestimate what, you know, what ECW brings to the table. I, I still think as far as exposure-wise, that was just, you know, I, I, I still think that uh, they mark out for the fact that, oh, he was the ECW champion, that they're going to get the dig on us. And it really, I think they, they ended up taking the hit in the loss in the long run. You know, I think I think one of the things is is that, and I think we've seen it with with WCW is their 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 kind of their life as far as you know like what's hot and what's not is based on the internet. And ECW has always been strong because you know Paul to his to his advantage saw this thing and probably jumped on it actually quicker than WCW and, and, and WWF. And also it's a it's a product that appeals to the same age group as the internet brings for the most part. So, you know, ECW is very over there, but you know your T, you know, it, as compared with WCW, your TV exposure is just terribly limited. But you're overestimating the whole internet audience. Uh, the internet audience to me has always been completely overdone. I mean, obviously, let's say uh, to me our internet audience, let's say uh, to me I think the internet audience is a point nine. That's what we draw. And I, I think to me that that's the range, and because we've had no real exposure and nothing really has been added to that, we might have a couple of viewers, you know, curiosity factor. But to me, the internet viewing audience is, is to me it's around like a point nine or point eight cable. I mean, the, to, that's what it is. And to me, you, you're trying so hard to please the, the, such a limited amount of fans. And I mean, I know it's been said to death before, but I think that's just a real bad bad way to to, to go about booking storylines and do, relying on such a small percentage when, you know, obviously in the WWF you're doing an over on period of a 9.1, they're onto something. You know, every every Tom, Dick, and Harry you might run into, you know, might know what you're talking about if you talk about, you know, Shane McMahon and The Rock in a cage. But, you know, uh, on the other hand, you know, people don't know, like I said, you know, who I, you know, a lot of people don't know who I am just walking up and down the street. So it, it goes to show you that the Internet is over is way overrated. I mean, it's, you know, I think eventually it'll be a, it'll be a bigger tool and a bigger factor, but it's, it's not there yet. I mean, I think there's going to come a day, probably, I don't know how, if it's going to be two years or six years or ten years, where it's going to be, you know, almost as big as television. But it's, it's, I, far, I it's, it's far from there now. I, oh, it is far from there now, but I do agree that it will be someday as big as television, but it's not there now, and I think Vince Russo, in my opinion, and I don't even know him that well. I mean, I worked uh, when I worked with him, he was publishing the WWF magazine or doing something for the magazine. I think he totally, I mean, he's working for a small amount of people that, to me, are insignificant. Those people are going to buy the show and are going to watch the show no matter what. So he's catering to fans that are, that are, that are an automatic instant. You know what I mean? They're instant. They're going to buy the pay-per-views no matter what. They're like, you and I, who are who are in the business, who watch the shows regardless, and those people that he's catering to are watching the show regardless. So to me, it's an effort. It's a point. You know what I mean? It's like, what are you really trying to accomplish? You know, I think it's it's he's over. Playing the fans that are going to buy it anyway. I'm sorry. It's just playing the fans that are going to buy the stuff anyway. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm having a hard time hearing you on the other side, on the third side. Okay. Uh, let's let's we're gonna go to the phone calls. Let's start with Ryan in Wisconsin. Ryan, you're here with uh, Justin Credible. Hey Justin, how's it going? Hey Ryan, how are you? Good. Um, actually, have you heard, have you been lately? Like probably maybe two months ago, were you walking through the Nash Nashville International Airport by chance? 
Yeah, I don't know if you can remember that. It looked. I almost came up to you because I don't know if it was you, but I thought it maybe was you, but I didn't want to embarrass myself if it wasn't. But um, we, I wasn't sure if you were down there or not doing a taping or something. It might have been. It might have been me. Okay. Um, actually, I had a question for. Do you know? Are they going to try to do any more? Is Polly or TNT going to get off their asses and actually try to? revamp you guys on the station and try to give you guys some more publicity? Uh, you know, I did, it's funny you say that. I did a personal appearance for TNN um, promoting one of our towns, and uh, one of the representatives for TNN was there, and uh, he claimed to me that, you know, that um, the fall lineup were, were heavily scheduled in for this big mega push and this big repackage. Quite honestly, I don't see it happening. I see the heads of TNN who, you know, the president and whoever they may be, um, they, they were the ones that came up with Roller Jam and they spent millions of dollars on, on a product that obviously failed in the ratings, and they got a product in ECW, which basically cost them nothing, and it's, you know, it's outdrawing them, so they look like asses, and, and in my opinion, they're trying you know, to save face as much as possible by not putting anything behind the show to do, you know what I mean? I, I don't think they're looking out for the, for the best interest of ratings. They're looking out for you know, themselves, thinking, hey, we look like schmucks. We spent millions of dollars. Here we have this product we got basically for free. They're outdrawing our, the product we had, and we put money into. So I, I, I don't see, I, I see it kind of being stale. And I, I really don't see TNN doing much. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope they put a lot behind us because I really do think we can do a little, you know, considerably better. But I, I think it's going to be a, a long haul and a difficult haul. Well, you know, the one thing also is is that right now you're almost in a lame duck status because, I mean, it's not a secret that, that TNN wants the World Wrestling Federation and and will get it depending on what the court rules. So you're kind of like, if you're, you know, if, if they rule against you, I mean, if they, if they rule against TNN, uh, then you'll then your company will probably end up being on TNN next season, and maybe they'll push you, maybe they won't. But I don't see anything where they're going to get behind ECW until you know after they find out that they're not getting the World Wrestling Federation. And if they get the WWF, it's all a moot point anyway, because then you really are a lame duck on that station. To be to be honest, I would really I would prefer to get off of TNN. I think TNN um, well, obviously we needed it. We needed something. It didn't hurt to be on TNN. Of course, it didn't. No matter what the ratings are, just to be on national television, on national cable television helped. But um, you know, I, I would like to see. I, I'd like to see you know WWF move to TNN. And I don't know if we're ready. Uh, it's very questionable that we're ready to go to USA. But I think if we if we were and if USA were you know was to pick up and put us on the Monday night time slot or, or whatever the scenario would be, I think that would be the key. If we stay with TNN, and it's going to be it's going to be very str- it's going to be a struggle to get anything out of them, in my opinion. And, and even if if they don't get the World Wrestling Federation, I still think they're not going to do anything with us, in my opinion. Why do you think TNN hasn't done a great job with promotion? I, I just think they're, they're, the, the higher ups are covering their own asses. I, I think you know they're, they're, they they want to prove that you know they're, that their programs, that their roller jam, and that their you know motorsports or whatever they have are their crown jewels. And they're I, in my I think they're afraid that if they do put a little you know advertise. Believe me, I, I lived in New York City when I was when roller jam first came out. I saw you know ads on the side of buses you know for roller jam in New York City. Could you imagine in a city like New York to have ECW banners and logos and time, you know, Friday nights at 8 p.m. on the side of buses in New York City. I mean, you're going to draw something, you know, and, and they never, you know, I never see that happening. And if they did that, the story, I mean, it would be different. I think Friday nights at 8 is tough anyways because our demographic, you know, Friday nights at 8, a lot of the kids, high, you know, college kids mostly are, are going to be out drinking, doing their thing. And, uh, you know, it, it's a tough spot anyway. Anyways, but I definitely think we could do better than a, a .9 or a you know 1.0 or whatever the average may be. I mean, I definitely think we can do you know a 1.8 or even a two eventually if if we were on the right track. Do you, do you have any like um, ideas as far as like uh, a station that you might be getting as a fall you know in the fall if if this thing falls apart? Uh, I have absolutely not. I just I, I know what everybody you know I know what's reported. Um, I just know that you know. 
possibly USA would would take us, maybe FX, you know, but that's that's all, you know, just what's reported is kind of what I get. I really don't, you know, Paul doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> um, you know that deal on Nitro when that, when that fan ran in with the sting mask? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was, it was not a planned spot by WCW. It was actually a publicity stunt by the Rick and Bubba radio show. Um, there was a guy who uh, ran in with a sting match. And in fact, he was actually arrested, and he spent some time in prison, and he is a... He's in the. Uh, ju- he was taken to juvenile detention center. Uh, so anyway, that's the situation. So it was not a plant after all. Huh. Yeah. Well, it was a plant by a local radio show trying to like. You know, he was supposed to be screaming the name of the station or the show, the Rick and Bubba show, the whole time the police ca- carted him off for publicity for the show, which in fact he did. It's just that the cameras weren't on him when he did it. So yeah, that that's was good. Yeah, that's on TV. Dummy. Yeah. Scott Steiner should have oh. beat him up. <laughs> Which what match are you running on? I just I, was that was that what was, when they were doing the blood thing? It was right before the blood came down. Right. So that was what Hogan and Awesome. Yep. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Everybody looked really kind of confused at that moment. I remember. But I just you know once they did that thing in Las Vegas, to me it's like everything that happens on their TV. I think it's just like some weird idea. Usually it is. Yeah. When uh, you know they had that fan run in and. You know, like for minutes on end. I think everything WCW does is just so bad you don't know what the hell to think. And it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's numbing. Let's go to Matt in San Francisco. Matt, you're next up with uh, Justin Credible. How's it going, PJ? Hey, how you doing? I had a couple questions for you. Sure, uh, just speak up a uh, what, what indie workers out there would you like to work with? Pardon me? What indie workers would you like to wrestle? What workers? Yeah. Indie. Indie, indie, indie guys. Indie guys. Oh, um, that's a good one. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, man, I, I really don't follow the independent scene at, at all. Um, I know a couple of ind- independent guys from Sean's promotion, um, and that's about it. Uh, that you know, that American Dragon and Spanky that he's got down there. Um, those are they're really talented guys for being in the business about six or eight months. I'd like to work with those guys. Uh, you know, he's got another big guy. Uh, he's like a 19-year-old kid. His name's Lance Cade. He's uh, he's he's really he's got something special. I think in a couple of years, once he gets seasoned, uh, he'll he'll definitely he'll definitely have something to offer. I'd like to work with those guys. I mean, I don't I don't mean to sound uh, pompous, but I, I honestly don't follow the indie scene enough to to give you uh, you know a respectable answer. So that's that's you know those guys are, are good, and that's all I really kind of know. What are what are you what are your thoughts as far as the Shawn Michaels promotion? Because you went down there a couple of weeks ago and did that shot. Actually, I just, uh, it's funny you say that. I just talked to him uh, about an hour ago. I was trying, we were trying to set something up for uh, me to go down for uh, one of the shows, but I'm, you know, unfortunately, I'm booked for, uh, well, not unfortunately, I'm just, I've, I was double booked in a, on a show where I'm doing the Brian Pillman Memorial. Um, I think Sean's got a really good thing going down there. Um, his talent is, uh, is really good. He's got a lot, you know, all of his students are working down there. Plus, he's got, uh, guys like Chaz Taylor, if you remember him from Global, and a couple of, uh, you know other local wrestlers. Uh, he runs a really tight ship. He um, he has a nice production, a nice look. He's got something even similar to the ECW entranceway with the TWA logo. So uh, when you go there and you actually see the live event and the live show, he puts on a real a real good show. You know he's got legit uh, you know legitimate commentators booth with monitors and and the whole thing at ringside. Uh, it's actually very well done. And uh, I think uh, I, I you know he's he's working real hard to to get sponsors and to and to get the ball moving. I mean, I know he did. the production costs are high, which, you know, he, it comes out of his pocket. And, uh, you know, and, and the, but the territory has been improving, you know, uh, where your ECW were trying. I mean, I, I know I'm trying. I mean, it's kind of like my own little campaign. But uh, we, I went down there and, uh, you know, we got brought Sandman down there. And we're trying to, you know, to work with each other. And I, I'd like to bring some of the TWA guys up to work with ECW because I really think there's some guys down there with a lot of potential. You know, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, and, and we're still, you know, believe it or not, trying to get Sean to come in and do some appearances for ECW because he's very interested in that as well. So, but, but uh, Sean's got a hell of a thing going down there, and I, I really, uh, I'd really like to see it get, you know, get going and moving. Having seen him recently, do you think he'll ever work again? Uh, last time I saw him was when I was down there. Um, you know, he walks around good. He's in, he looks, he's in good shape. Um, uh, do I think he'll ever work again? Personally, yes. 
I don't know if it'll be. I, I doubt it'll ever be full time, but I think if it's right, um, I, I, you know, I can't. Say, I can't say he wouldn't. I think if it was like Bret Hart, you know, or something like that, and, and if Sean felt that he could perform the way Sean performed, and in my opinion, Sean was the best in the game ever, and uh, I think if he could live up to those standards, and if he felt that that he could, I, I believe that he that he that he would compete again. Yeah, absolutely. So something on the big stage or... Uh, you know, yeah, I think so. I think it'd have to be the right scenario. You know, I, I mean, I know his heart, you know, believe it or not. I mean, I, I speak to him all the time. He's really into the school. He's really into the TWA. He really, he wants to, he really wants to get this regional thing going. I mean, he's so into it. You know, like we spent, like, you know, yesterday I was, uh, we talked for like an hour about just stupid little things about running towns and, and talent and just trying to get everything going. He's so passionate about it right now. I think, you know, in his words, if I remember correctly, he said, like, something like, you know, I've been to the big dance, you know, he's done it all kind of a thing, and he just, you know, he wants to, you know, do do this on a different level. And, you know, and that's why he would like to get involved with ECW, just because, you know, it would help his promotion out if we were to feed guys, you know, to help down there and, and bring some of his guys up, as well as bring Sean up to help us in, you know, to draw some ratings or to draw some help. Houses, you know, only obstacle being, you know, the World Wrestling Federation, which, uh, you know, from what I understand, we're, you know, Sean's trying to negotiate right now. So, you know, hopefully all, you know, all uh, comes through and, and that all, all that stuff I just mentioned happens, you know, and, there, and there's a good likelihood that it will. Hmm. Another question for you, DJ. Uh, who got you into the WWF? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Who got you into Titan? Uh, believe it or not, Tony DeVito. Really? Tony DeVito got me in there. Um, I met him because I came straight from, you know, I, I lived in Connecticut all my life, but uh, I, I went and trained in Calgary. And uh, from when I came from back from Calgary, I'd gotten, I'd wrestled up there um, and did ring crew and stuff for a couple of months. But basically I lost, you know, 30, 40 pounds, ran out of all my money. My parents, you know, couldn't afford to send me any more money to live. So I had to come home, and when I came home, there was a local wrestling gym about 30, 40 minutes from my house near New York, and uh, that's where I met Tony DeVito, and uh, actually it was Paul Roma's school, and uh, Tony was doing jobs for the World Wrestling Federation, and he told me and my friend Nick Barberi to um, to go to the New Haven Coliseum and to talk to Tony Correa, and uh, Tony said, you know, uh, come to Poughkeepsie one night, and, uh, you know, that's how I started, and then I just, you know, they liked what they saw, I guess, and that's when they were doing all the Manhattan Center Raws, so they needed jobbers to, you know, they needed talent, they needed bodies to, to do whatever, and, uh, that you know, I didn't know any better, you know, I didn't know I was digging a hole for myself, but, uh, you know, it, I, I don't regret it, I, I, I learned so much by doing all of that, it was, it was definitely cool, but it was, believe it or not, Tony DeVito. Hmm. Another question for you, how close is ECW to coming out to the San Francisco Bay Area? Um, I don't know. I've heard so many things. You know, uh, I heard we were supposed to go in the summertime. You know, now I know that's not that's not the case. I think the biggest problem. I know we were supposed to also go to Vegas, which would, of course, we were we were we would go to Vegas. We would try to do an entire West Coast loop. I think the biggest problem right now is, uh, believe it or not, is the ring crew. I think uh, we need you know because we need to store rings in different parts of the country, like the other promotions do. You know, we only have one ring truck. I mean, we have more than one ring, but what we'd have to do is, is set up camp in, in, you know, the West Coast so cause our guys couldn't possibly drive, you know, an entire week's worth of driving and then drive back to make it to Philly, for example. So I think that's that's been, an, uh, you know, one of the obstacles. I don't know if that's the only obstacle. That might sound like a lame-ass excuse, but I think that's one of the things, as simplistic as it may sound, but I'd like to think we'd go down there soon. I'd like to think there's a lot of people, I mean, especially with the XPW, the success it's been having. I'd like to think that there'd be a good market for us there. You could almost do something where you borrow like a ring from an indie group. Yeah, I, I, you know, we probably could do that. I, I don't know if if Paul would get. For, I mean, I'm sure we could find good rings out there, you know. Uh, but I don't know if Paul would would subject us to <laughs> to working in indie rings. Not that he, you know, 
not that we're you know better than that, but I think I think if Paul wanted, I, I think if we go, he wants to go with the whole thing, the whole setup. He wants to go with the you know the ECW that people see with the with the cameras, the lights, the, the you know the stage, the setup. Every, you know, I think when we go, I think he wants to make it right. Let's see. What da, 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 da. Okay, this is from Abe. I've got a couple of emails to get through. He says, I'd like to let you know that the Thunder rating comment was never made by Vince Russo as far as using the uh, basketball game. He said that the New York basketball game affected it, but that was not the excuse. I think is what it says. It's kind of hard to read what he, what he, what he wrote. Okay. Uh, what about rumors of ECW, CNN moving ECW to Tuesday? We've talked about that before. I don't think that's... Don't think that's happening. Uh, this is for uh, Justin. At the ECW show in Orlando in 1998, you brought Scott Hall to the show. Scott Hall and yourself were confronted by Shane Douglas, Bam Bam Bigelow, and Chris Candido. Did you feel betrayed by the ECW locker room because they sided against you and wanted your f- friend to leave? Uh, what are your feelings on this situation, and do you have any heat with anyone over that? how that thing went down? Uh, actually, I did feel a little. I felt very torn in between. But uh, you know, Shane and Shane and, and Bammer were real good, and Chris was good about it. They uh, they they came up to me right away, uh, and they they said, "PJ, we're sorry. You know, this has nothing to do with you. You know, and uh, the, the, every, everything was cleared. So it was uh, it was a very awkward situation. I was very emotional about it because you know I, I see Scott a little differently than everybody else does. You know, and uh, you know he's made his own bed. He has to lie in it. And uh, you know, and whatever, but uh, I believe also that they over exaggerated a lot because uh, a couple of weeks later, you know, Bam Bam was having a lot of trouble in ECW, and he uh, he came up to me, baby facing me, saying, you know, Scott's not such a bad guy after all. I really didn't have any heat with him, so you know, there's some backpedaling too, and I, everybody gets along now, so it's you know, bygones are bygones, and it, it was I was put in an awkward situation though, but it, both sides, Scott Scott, Scott did didn't really care. He kind of shrugged it off, and Shane was very good to me as far as explaining it and making me feel, hey, don't worry about it. We have no problem with you, Peach. We like you. You know, it's just it's with it's with Scott. So it was, you know, whether it was politics or not, it was everything was handled amicably. Okay, and I also want to apologize for everyone. We kind of got knocked off the air here. I want to apologize to you, PJ, for um for all that. And oh, uh, let's go to the let's let's go to the phone. So we go to Richard in British Columbia. You're next up. Uh, hi there, uh, Justin. Uh, nice to talk to you. Uh, just like to say that I'm one of those internet fans that is not being programmed to the dub with WCW because they aren't impressing me right now. So even if they're trying to program for me, it's not working. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, pal. Oh. I mean, he, he, go, go, go. Can you talk louder, Richard? Okay, I'm sorry. No, I'm one of those internet fans that WCW is trying to program for, and it's not really working all that well. I'm just not impressed with the way their product's going. Well, uh, you know, I believe. You. I, I I don't know I don't know what the formula WCW right now in my opinion they're just trying to to do anything that works I think Vince Russo is is, is scrambling he's and I I mean believe me I, I'm just talking out of my butt here I mean I don't know any the, the slightest thing about booking and I, I really don't ever want to but um you know I think that he's trying to do anything possible. To, to compete, and uh, you know whatever sticks to the wall sticks, and uh, unfortunately a lot of it is sticking, and uh, you know that's pretty much how it is, and that's how I feel. Uh, quick question: uh, Given the relationship you guys have with Japan, probably being the best of the big three American promotions, having a relationship there, are you thinking of bringing anybody over for a summer tour, like? Uh, Tanaka again, or maybe as a vague rumor I'm hearing around Hayabusa for a few matches. I figure there'd be some great matches with you I'd love to see. Um, I think uh, Tanaka is coming in for the pay-per-view. I may be mistaken, but I know Tanaka does have plans to come in, and I've heard rumors of Hayabusa coming in, and I, w- I-, I love to get in the ring with Masato Tanaka. I think he is a very, very talented man, and uh, he's, 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 what, he's a great professional, and if we had if we had just a couple guys in our company, a couple more guys like him, you know, I mean, I, I can't say enough good things about him, and it, it, it would definitely be exciting, and uh, I, I would love to do it. I mean, he's definitely one of those guys uh, that are special and uh, that 
can definitely, you know, do anything in the ring, whatever style, whatever you want. So, yeah, I, I think it'd be great. And I do think that, that I don't know about Hayabusa, but I do know about Tanaka that he will be coming in this summer. Um, Have you ever been in the ring with Tanaka? Pardon me? Have you ever been in the ring with Tanaka? Oh, yeah, uh, several times. Uh, I've had uh, once, uh, two singles matches with Tanaka, one on television uh, from Buffalo, New York, and I did a house show match with him in, uh, where was it, in Washington, D.C., and uh, we did uh, two tag teams, uh, the, the three-way title match at the, at the, the what is it, Living Dangerously? Oh, that's right, yeah. And, uh, and, and we did the one where they actually beat uh, Lance and I for the belt in uh, Cincinnati. I'm trying to be good with the, the place and dates. But, uh, you know, not too many times, maybe five times. But every time Just that I have them in the room. Pardon me? Just two singles. Just two singles, but it's been a pleasure every time. Are you are you familiar with any of the uh, the? Uh, by the way, do you know if uh, if New Jack and Boss Mahoney went to uh, the Friday Night FMW show or did they not go? Do you even know? I don't think they went. Okay. I I, I don't think they went. I, as far as I know, because uh, my wife talks to John Ball's wife, and uh, I I don't think he went. I think there was some uh, indiscrepancies with some money, and uh, I don't think they went over. I, I'm not sure. I can't confirm it, but I I, I don't think he he did go. By the way, real quick, I just because we just got an email about this. Is there? Have you, did, did Shawn Michaels mention? Is there uh, like if he's going to be going to TV Monday or Tuesday or or because I'm presuming he's going by the end of the month to uh, WWF TV. Um, he's not going this weekend, no. Okay. Uh, not that not not that he made, he didn't make any indications to me. It didn't sound like it, no. So and I, I'm, I'm actually pretty. I could, you can uh, put the bank that he's not going to because he's got a TWA show on the ninth of May, okay. so he's not going now. Okay, anything else, Richard? Uh, yes, I was going to ask the same question. Uh, in relation to Mexico, are you guys thinking of bringing any up on Discovered Talent or talent that WCW may have let go? You know what? Uh, and I know Paul feels the same way. I know Bob, I, I heard actually, I think it was on, on uh, I think Dave, you reported on your hotline today, I think, that uh, Bobby Eaton was let go. From, uh, Bobby Bobby Eaton was let go by WCW, yeah. And I know Paul Heyman has been try Paul's been trying to to get Bobby Eaton in for a long time uh, through uh, deals or what have you. So uh, I, I think it's inevitable that Bobby Eaton uh, comes to ECW. I think uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him within the next couple of weeks. If I know the way Paul is, because I know Paul is very high on uh, Bobby Eaton, and I think he would bring uh, a lot to all of us. You know, he could teach me a million things. I'd love to get in the ring with Bobby Eaton. I'm sure he still he still has it. it you know. It Maybe if he doesn't have it physically, I know he has it mentally, you know. So he'd be a great addition for, for all of us, for, for the young guys. And, hell, I still consider myself a young guy, so I think he'd be great. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of undiscovered talent out there. But, uh, you know, it's it, 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 ECW is very selective, and it's very it's very hard to describe the way we go about getting talent. It's, un, it's unreal, but sometimes half the, to, half the time the way guys get jobs is it just lands on our uh, – they just land on our lap somehow. You know, it's 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 like we're not. Sometimes we don't go out far enough to look for talent. They just, you know, somehow they show up. They get a tryout. We like what they see, what we see, and you know, boom, they have a job. And it, there's really no structure. And, so, and maybe there should be. I, I'd like to see us have uh, have scouts and, and guys, you know, actually looking, you know, internationally for talent. I think Victor Canonis does that for us a little bit, but I'd like to see you know others besides him do it. Mm-hmm. And, um, okay. in, in relation to Bobby Eaton, I'm kind of surprised WCW let him go. I mean, he's practically done a lot. You know, back in the NWA days, he did a lot for that company to keep it afloat. And he would have been, you know, great for the back for the young guys. So I'm kind of, you know, shocked by that decision, considering there's other people I dropped before that. I played it a lot, a, too, but that means nothing. I think well, that he was the longest consistent uh, worker that that company's had because I, th- I could be wrong, but I think he'd be the only guy who dates back to the buyout because he never, you know, he never went to WWF. He never went anywhere. You know, you know, Flair, Flair left for a couple of years. Luger left for a couple of years. I guess Sting, you know, st- st- but Bobby, Bobby was around even before Sting because Bobby was the there up in '89, uh, end of '88, in, end of '88. So yeah, yeah, you're right. It would be Cause Sting because Sting never, Sting never left, and Bobby Eaton never left, and I don't think anyone else uh, no. can say that. Yeah. It's- 
Well, they don't. I mean, no, there's no loyalty in this business, you know, for any any company, you know. So it, it doesn't surprise me, and I, and, I, and it's it's unbelievable that, that that they can't see that Bobby Eaton brings a lot to the table and could could teach young guys phenomenal amounts of things. I mean, I, I honestly, and I, and you know, if he's out there listening, I mean, I would love Bobby Eaton to come and teach me things because I, I'm I'm pretty darn sure and give you 100 percent that he could teach me a lot, and 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 you know that and that and not like that, but I am pretty much on top of the game in ECW right now. I'm not saying I'm the best worker. I'm saying I'm the world champion, and I'm saying Bobby Eaton could teach me a lot. So that that says a lot, you know. And I'd love to have him on board. Yeah, I can see how he could mean a lot for that comp- any company out there. Really, just that just says is what WCW is these days. But yeah. I'll, I'll let you guys go. There's other people in line, and thanks for your time, and great luck with your reign there. Uh, Justin, nice talking to you. Cool, man. Nice talking to you. Okay. Kind of like Arn um, Anderson, where they don't use him to teach the young guys interviews or anything like that. Oh boy, we talk about that one all the time. I mean, can you imagine? Arn Anderson may be the best promo guy, or, or certainly in the top three or four in the entire business, and every time he went on Nitro Thunder... You know, usually the ratings went up, and and the promo was always good, and and yet more often than not, and of course it changed, but depending on who was in charge, but more often than not, he was not ever a television. He hasn't been a television character on that company. Uh, and nothing, and I and I don't mean I, I was. What got me into wrestling was WCW and the NWA. That's what I started liking. Being from this area, you'd think I was a WWF fan. I wasn't, and I'm, I don't mean to be a WCW basher. I have nothing against them. I just they just for some reason can't. They don't get it. They they can't. They don't realize any. They don't utilize the talent that they do have, and they do have so much talent just from the money that they have to buy the talent and just keep them sitting there. And I would think to have an on-air personality, whether he's a commissioner, whether he's uh, anything, you know. Yeah, just, just a heel manager for a guy who's done a good interview. It's hell it, to help anybody do interviews. I mean, I think you'd, even if you even if you have him in a backstage role uh, to do, you know, to teach guys. I mean, hell, Arn Anderson could come in if I worked in WCW, and if he just spent a day with me, could teach me, what, you know, what I would probably take me to learn a year in in a couple of hours from him. And and that's something I really need to would need to work on. It is my promos, and that's something that a guy like him would would, would do from so much help. You know, it, it's it's unreal. It's unreal. And there are guys out there, believe it or not, that do want to learn. And unfortunately, no, there's nobody teaching it. And I think we've talked about it before. It's starting to become a lost art. And it's not being put, the knowledge isn't being passed down as well as it should. And a lot of it is getting lost in the mix. And that's unfortunate. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, just as a role for Arn Anderson, just the idea of him, even as a babyface manager for Bill Goldberg, you know, where Goldberg doesn't talk, and, he, you know, although he has talked since, but I mean, if Bill Goldberg didn't talk and Arn talked for him, you know, I mean, I, I think two years ago it probably would have worked better when Goldberg had never talked, but, you know, there's some, you know, I mean, there's, you can sit here and come up with ten roles for Arn Anderson. Sure, but, but you're absolutely right, Dave. If, if, if Goldberg were never to, let's say he never spoke, or if all he said was, you know, who's next, and you had Arn Anderson, you know, doing his work, I mean, that would have worked. They dictate what the fan, you know what I mean? They they are the ones that dictate. So if they put it in our heads that this is what it should be, you know, we should, we will buy it. They most most times and not they they just expose themselves to what they are, and it's unorganized. Really not, you know, booking. You know, we talk about ECW booking on the fly. You know, since you know, I mean, I know Vince Russo is very, you know, into detail and stuff, but they, they I really don't think they, the old regime, thought much uh, about anything, to be honest. Yeah, and, you know. it's, and it's un, it sometimes showed. Al, real quick, who are the two winners of? I just noticed we got the two WF winners in, uh, from the trivia contest, which surprised me. We got them so quick. Al, um, who are the winners? Yeah, it's, just... it's Jared St. Laurent from Florida and Marcus Blanc. And from Georgia are the winners. Yeah, the final match that Ric Flair had in the World Wrestling Federation was February the 10th, 1993, in Dortmund, Germany, and his opponent was Bret Hart. Ah. Uh, so, yeah. I thought it was Roddy Piper. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. I thought everybody was going to say Kurt Hennig, you know, just right across the board, which is kind of like why I said what I said, because I figured instantly, I mean, his last television match was Kurt Hennig, and it was like a loser leave town type of a deal, and that's, you know, but, but he wrestled um, house shows and a European tour afterwards. Uh, let's 
Let's go to uh, let's go to Randy in Tennessee. Randy, you're next up. How you doing today, guys? Real good, real good. Um, Dave, I was the one that sent you the uh, undertaping results last night. Sure, sure, Randy. Yeah, from uh, Memphis. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry for leaving out some of the parts in the uh, taping, but uh, last night in the Battle Royal, uh, a fan jumped the ring. Fan uh, jumped over the railing and into the uh, ring as well, and. Uh, as he was being arrested, Scott Steiner saw all this happening and uh, pulled, stepped out of the ring and started uh, kicking the guy in the, uh, in the balls and uh, stepping on him and stuff. Oh, God. That is so He's scary. Been for that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then just went back and... Uh... Anyway, I was, I, was, I, was I was wondering if you could uh, kill or confirm a couple of rumors for me. I'll try. Um... Dub- I hear that uh, WCW is planning on bringing back the uh, Clash of the Champions, but not to put on TBS, but to make it the annual August pay-per-view replacing uh, Road Wild. Was that um, directed towards... I'm sorry, I can't hear a thing Randy's saying. Oh, it's yeah, that, that was actually a question um, towards me. I'm sorry. I, oh, let, let me... Um, you know, I've, I've heard that, but I haven't got that... Con- I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I know, you know they're not going to do Road Wild in August, so they're going to have a new name. It wouldn't be the uh, worst idea. I mean, it's, it's a name, you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, but I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I will ask about that though. And also, um, there's another one going around that uh, sl- psychosis is trying to get himself fired from uh, WCW. There's something to that. I don't know if fired is the right word, but if he was trying to get himself fired, he was he's going about it the right way by no showing so often. So um, I don't know what's up with him. I mean, he's wrestling T1 all the time, and he's. He hasn't been coming. Are they still um, banned from Mexico for the most part? Uh, to wrestle there? Yeah. Uh, they're supposed to be. I mean, it's never changed um, as far as... So, yeah, yeah, they're supposed to be banned because I know... I spoke with Parka, and he mentioned to me how he's not allowed to work Mexico. Of course, he still does. But <laughs> if he can work under a different name, it's okay. Yeah, but he can't work under a different name. He's a superstar there. Well, Sakosis has a different name down there. The, the yeah, I know that was that that different name. The, you know the idea that you know why he was wrestling for, with a different name down there, don't you? Just to throw off WCW, like people wouldn't know. He's the main event in Tijuana, where well, Americans go down. <laughs> Nicho. I mean, that was his nick. I mean, that's what everyone calls him, Nicho. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he wrestles as Nicho. Well, maybe management wouldn't know, but they don't pay attention to that. No, I just remember. Um, God, who was it? It was. Uh, was it Lismark? It was one of the guys that um, got yelled at. Um, I think it was Lismark Jr. got yelled at once uh, by WCW because they'd gone through like the Observer and they had seen him wrestling in Mexico, but it was it, you know it was Lismark Sr. and they like just you know just like figured it was him. So. That's good. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, I have a question, uh, Justin. How are you doing today? Uh, he's got a question for you, Pete. Okay, Dave, if you could interpret it, because I really I can't hear him at all. Okay, um, just tell me it, and I'll ask him. I was just wondering uh, when ECW is coming to uh, Memphis. Do you have any idea of ECW running any shows in Memphis? Um, no, we're we're not scheduled. Uh, I'm amazed that we haven't. Uh, but as of right now, as of, we have uh, pretty much up until June booked, and uh, Memphis is not on the. On, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to go back to Nashville in the fall, and I'd like to. I'd like to think we're going to Memphis if we're going to Nashville, but we didn't last time. So hopefully uh, we hit it this time. Yeah, I, I was just I was just wondering because uh, I remember when. ECW had the feud with uh, Jerry Lawler three years ago. Yeah, when Tommy Dreamer went down to fight Jerry Lawler, yeah. yeah. They came down to the uh, Expo Center and just, uh, sold the place out. For like, yeah. uh, like Brian Christopher and Lawler versus Sandman and Tommy Dreamer. And um, yeah. the, in fact, this day, the Expo Center, you remember, was a flea market? And oh, yeah, they, they, yeah, when they went into that, that period when they were in the flea market shows. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. They hardly sold out until the uh, ECW came. But you know, Dave, if uh, Kidman was headlining those shows, it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I think Memphis would probably, what do, what do you think? I mean, I think Memphis would probably be a good city just because it it has a wrestling tradition. I mean, WCW did big business there. You know, they didn't last night, but, you know, they were when, you know, they were the first many times, you know, several times they went there, they sold out for TVs. 
What is what is out of curiosity? What, is, is there an estimate on on what was what was in the building last night? Um, I saw the number. I mean, it was in the three thousand in the building, but the paid was in the fifteen hundred range. Wow, I remember. Yeah, it was not. What? I remember I was in the Memphis territory when I was when I was there through WWF, and when Tommy uh, Sabu Van Dam came down there, we did like a thousand people at a, I don't know I think it was a flea market or something like whatever small. Yeah, he was talking about the flea market show at the Expo Center. Yeah, and I was there. I, I was working as PG one eight seven or some some silly thing like that. And uh, yeah, I remember and we did quite well. Well, they did quite well there. So yeah, I would I would imagine we would do probably better than what WCW did. Oh, I would think first time you would for sure. Absolutely, that's amazing that they only can do that kind of fifteen hundred. That's horrible, God. Yeah, and see, like, um, um, Ra- hey, Randy, anything else on that show? That yeah, we... um, now the uh, Bret Hart came out and eliminated Hogan. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, at the end, when Hogan uh, was, was put through the table, it looked like he uh, cut his arm. Not, oh, really? Not anything serious, but uh, it's like a little scratch. But... Mm. That's serious for Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else, Randy? Or? What's that? Anything else? Oh, I was going to ask you about that uh, show at the Expo Center. I was asking Justin, do you remember the uh, brawl that the uh, ECW, that Van Damme and Sabu and Waller had with uh, fans throwing uh, weapons at each other? Do you remember, he's asking if you remember if, uh, when Van Damme and Sabu and Lawler had a brawl at the Expo Center where the fans started throwing the weapons and stuff. Yep, I absolutely do. And uh, Van Damme at one point threw part of a broken table at a, uh, a little kid. And, uh, oh. and the little kid just picked it up and took it home with it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny part. Well, uh, that's all, and uh, thanks for watching. We've got a, an email here. I'm sure, I don't remember this, but you probably do. And this uh, a fan named Dan who says that he's got a tremendous memory of you, of, of you. And it was October 31st. It was a Halloween show, and you were wrestling uh, Jerry Lynn. Um, and you wrestled as a. Uh, or Jerry Lynn was introduced as the mysterious JL in his old gimmick. And of course, uh, you came with, a, with what he said with the line of the year when you looked at him and goes and he said. Uh, I thought that in ECW you don't have to dress like a clown. Never in my life would I wear a mask that effing stupid. Did you say something like that? <laughs> yes, I did. It was in Stamford, Connecticut, I think, believe it or not. Yeah. So, yeah. so it was kind of like kind of like an inside rib because of uh, your sin as Aldo Montoya, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Just totally just spoofing on us. <laughs> a couple of quick notes here. Um, uh, we were talking about like short title reigns. Uh, we've, we actually had forgotten this one, Brian. Um, Mankind held the WWF title for one day. God, you know what was funny is like years ago. I mean, I could remember every single title change from every promotion, and now they happen so quick. You just don't even remember. But you remember he won it in the three way and then lost it to Hunter the next night. When was that? No, it was uh, SummerSlam in the day after when 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 Austin lost it. Oh, that's Man- right. Yeah. Mankind won the three way with Austin and and Hunter, and then uh, and then Hunter beat him for the title the next night. Pretty disturbing that that was a year ago. We forgot about it. Was it? It's not even a year ago. It's August. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is just kind of a question. Well, I guess um, this co- this person's asking. It's kind of an obvious question, but um, it's like you know, why did Chris Candido and Mike Awesome go to WCW, and why did other people? Uh, do you ever give a thought to going to WCW, even though WCW is in total disarray? Um, let's see. Uh, when 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 Hall and Nash went, the company was strong, but they had no idea what it was going to be in a few years. But now the stars who jump ship know what WCW is, but they still continue to go. I mean, it's pretty obvious why people go. I mean, you know. Well, Candido had no choice. He was fired. And, uh, and you know, for obvious reasons, you know, he... You know, he was just more. Uh, you know, he you know he had his own demons to tend to, and Paul just couldn't take it anymore. And uh, Mike, obviously, you know, enough said was obviously all for the money. And uh, you know, that's what this business, our business, is driven by, unfortunately, sometimes. So, you know, those. And, and the reason I've never gone is, you know, I've worked for the past three years is just incredible to try to to build something, uh, you know, out of my career. And obviously, I did a lot of damage. You know, my career was pretty much over to, at, at the age of 23 when I left the World Wrestling Federation. I was a nothing. 
you know, I was a you know a job guy at best, barely getting booked. So you know, it was a, I was starting you know from scratch, and uh, I, I don't feel it's you know I, I think I would be doing myself harm. I'm 26 years old. I feel that I need to grow, and I think you know when I'm 35 or 36, if WCW wants to offer me a ton of money, sure, why not? <laughs> but at this age, I think uh, it's a pretty solid move to, to to stick it out and to do what I'm doing right now. You know, now that you you and your wife have just had your first child, does that has that changed your mentality as far as wrestling at all? Oh, uh, it, it, you know, it has changed my mentality on everything in my life. I mean, just you know, I'm actually holding the poor little guy right now. I mean, it, you, you know, you're responsible for another life, and 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 the business. Uh, you know, you have to realize that it is a business, and uh, you know, and you have to. Uh, you have to make the decisions that any regular businessman would make. I mean, you work at BK, they're offering you five bucks an hour. McDonald's down the road's offering you six. What are you going to do? You know, you got to bring home the paycheck. You know, and 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 unlike other jobs, you know, it can end. It could all end for me tomorrow, especially with the way this business is, the way the the bumps are nowadays, the way the, the styles of work. You know, the things we have to do to to you know compete nowadays. It, it, it's it's unheard of. So it's it's scary it, it scares me and uh you know you just got to do it day by day and try to keep a straight level head and uh do the best you can and save as much as you can because you never know you know when's your last match going to take place you know it could all go down tomorrow uh, and i don't know and i hopefully you're you're prepared financially and I, unfortunately most guys don't think that way have you had the urge to tone down anything in the ring pardon me have you had the urge to tone down anything in the ring so there's like less of a chance to get hurt or anything like that um, no, I mean, I just, uh, I, I, I just like to, uh, I, I'm just very, uh, very cautious about, about like, you know, especially money now, I've really toned down on, you know, expenses and stuff, for example, I'm very, you know, frugal, <laughs> so to speak, and, uh, and, you know, I, I, I won't do stupid things where three years ago I'd say, hey, let's do 15 table spots, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but, you know, uh, let's just do this for the sake of doing it, now it's, you know, you, you count what you're, you count the bumps you take, you count what you do, and, and you really, you try to be as careful as you can, and, you know, and that's not saying being a bad worker, having a bad match, that's saying being smart, and being a smart worker, because there's a difference, you know, there's a, there's a difference between being, you know, uh, smart and, and being, you know, stupid, and I, I think a lot of guys, like, you know, I, I've said this before, and I'm not trying to bury him, but Vic Grimes tried, is trying to get over with a very uh, Cactus Jack-style mentality where he goes out there and kills himself, and he thinks that's the trick, that's what's going to do it for me, and unfortunately, I see Vic falling into the trap of, you know, killing him, not, not literally killing himself, but breaking his own body down, and in a couple of years, not having a dime to show for it, and, and that's what I'm trying to say, and that's what's, that's what's no good. Even Cactus Jack, though, chose his spots a lot better, as opposed to just, you know, killing himself on every bump, instead of going out there and, you know, waiting for the big spot at the end of the match to do something dangerous. Uh, you know, yeah, and and he, he did it for whatever reasons he felt he, he had to do it. And, it, you know, I just, I, I'm, I hope, you know, I try to keep myself in good physical shape. I mean, I try, I, 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 A, I'm not, I, I, won't, I don't have the guts to do what they, those guys do. I'll be honest with you. You know, I, mean, I don't have, you know, if it takes for me to jump off a 30-foot balcony crashing down, you know, I, I'm not going to do it. I have too much on the line, you know. But uh, you know, I, but I think I have I can entertain the people in other ways. You know, uh, I'm not saying I'm the greatest athlete of all time, but I think it, with athleticism, with timing, with with storyline, with, with you know whatever little charisma I do have, <laughs> I'm just ripping myself out. But you know, I, I think there's other ways that I can get it done. So you know, that's the way I choose to do it. You know, everybody chooses their own path. Let's go to Bill in Ohio. Bill, you're up with uh, Just Incredible. Hey, Justin, I'd just like to say uh, congratulations on your title win. As Thank you very much. It was a very entertaining match. I didn't I didn't like where you took the driver to the table. I kind of like this. Kind of looked a little did you, did you get a, did you get a, You know, it's funny. I was out of town over the weekend, so I, right before the show, I, I just watched uh, the, the match. Were you, were you okay on that, uh, that Death Valley driver through the table spot? Actually, I killed my lower back. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it looked. It looked like you took a little bit of the rail. Yeah, it didn't feel good. Didn't feel good at all. But it, you know, that's that's what happens. And it didn't even, it, believe it or not, you know, it sucks about those things. It didn't even look that good. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the prettiest, but I mean, it, it got you got the move over. Is what is what I was looking for, really. I mean, I was just 
I heard you were in the title match. I was like, hey, I got to see this. <laughs> it's funny. It's the the worst thing about wrestling is when it looks bad and it hurts, <laughs> <laughs> and it happens a lot. But uh, yeah, I was just calling in. Uh, I was reading on the internet you uh, you and Raven were possibly working the Pillman show. Can I get yep. any confirmation on that? Um, from you know what? From uh, I only the only confirmation I got on that is the internet. <laughs> So you're just as I'm, good at. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm under that. I'm like under that impression. <laughs> I actually got a press release right before we went on the air saying that. So. No, I, I, no, I believe it or not, I am the last to know about everything. Paul hasn't told me about it. I just, you know, I go on the net, I see it. So I guess it is. I guess it is happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope. Well, now I'm definitely going to get tickets, and I hope to see you guys work a match there. Well, we'll work our asses off for you, man. Thank you very much. And uh, um, is, have you heard anything about Scott Hall? Is he back healthy? I mean, is there any possibility he might be returning? Um, I, you know, I haven't talked to Scott unfortunately in a long time. Um, he changed it, but you know, this might sound BS, but he changed his numbers, and I haven't gotten them, so I haven't spoke to him. I hear through, you know, sources that he's healthy and he's clean, which I, you know, I hope that's all true. But uh, I don't, you know, I, his return is has got to happen soon. I mean, they're paying him a, a good chunk of change, you know, to, to, you know, and I'm sure they don't want him resting on his laurels. Things yeah, because you read right. everywhere, it's going to be like this week and now. It's Next week, or it'll be two weeks from now. I mean, well, did, I mean, didn't he? Didn't he have? Didn't he have neck surgery? So I, didn't well, I don't. I mean, I, mean, I don't know how serious it was. I would, he, he I, 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 I'm assuming he had. I mean, I was. I'm under the impression that he's not around because of neck surgery. I mean, as far I, as I read, they were going to bring him back on a TV role. But I mean, you, you guys are the in the business. I'm just an outsider trying to. I, Learn. So, hey, some, hey, sometimes, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm the last yeah, to know yeah. these things too. Believe me, and I, and I talk to a lot of people in that company, and, and sometimes I find out stuff in the strangest places too. And uh, Justin, is there any possibility you and uh, Lance are going to work an angle over the? Oh, college? actually, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure we are. Uh, I have a good gut feeling that uh, Lance is going to stay, and uh, we, we're going to be working at the pay per view in the three way, and I think that is going to lead to. Uh, to a singles match at Heat Wave, so yeah, you're gonna there'll, there'll be quite a bit of me and Lance out there. All right, well, I'll be seeing you at the Tillman Show, hopefully, if you're there, and I'll definitely see you at the Saturday Night Show here in Columbus on the 27th. Absolutely, man. Thank you very much. All right, thanks for uh, having me, and uh, congratulations, and keep keep the title, man. Thank you, sir. Right, thanks. Okay, thanks a bunch. Okay, thanks a bunch, Bill. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of emails here. Uh, this is one from Brian in New Jersey. This is a tough one, uh, believe me. It says, how many years did Dr. Sam Shepard spend in wrestling? I, I don't think um, Sam Shepard spent that much. T- I think that Sham- Sam Shepard is a guy who did some wrestling, and I know he wasn't good at it, but I think it was one of those things where his career, because he was so famous from other things, that his his thing his wrestling aspect of his life was kind of exaggerated. But he he did do it. He did develop the mandible. He was he did use the mandible claw as his finisher, and um, but I think he only probably wrestled like a year or two in in the Columbus, Ohio area. Um, and this is from Jeremy in St. Louis, who goes, did Randy Savage sign a deal with WCW? Or it was last time night a one time thing? I'm under the impression it was one time thing. Brian, do you know any more than that? I don't think he signed yet. Yeah, okay. And this is uh, just wondering if WWF will keep Taz off of television because of his injury. Um, I'm under the impression that uh, when they do the injury angle for television, uh, he is really injured. He really did tear his bicep, but they shot an angle afterwards where, where Chris Benoit injured him to give him an opponent when he comes back, that uh, that he will not be on, on TV for quite a while, you know, two months or so, maybe a little longer. Uh, let's see. Will the UK pay-per-view be available online, or do we have to wait for the video to come here? Do you know anything about that? I, think, I'm, I don't think it's available online. I haven't anything heard anything about it being online. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. I don't think it is. Uh, I think that uh, you know that's the. Deal. Um, I was wondering uh, what, as far as Justin, you know, um, what's your feelings as far as like um, you know you worked with Don Marie for a while. Now you're going to be working with Francine. What, what are the, what's the differences between the two as far as you know? pluses and minuses of what they can do and things like that. Uh, I, I like Francine a lot better for the for the fact that she has a lot of experience. She knows her. She knows how to work the people. She know. I mean, Don Marie's very good. Also, don't get me wrong. And I'm not just trying to give a politically correct answer, but I really, uh, uh, Francine, uh, you know, just brings. She, she she's smart. You know, she has a lot of upstairs. She knows how to work the people. She she, she brings a lot to the table. And and uh, I think I said this in an interview recently. Um, when I first had that whole, um, you know circus sideshow of, you know, Nicole and Chastity and Jason and that whole gig, I really, you know, A, 
that was too much, and B, I didn't know how to use a, a female manager. And I really do think that having Francine will be, a, you know, will really add a lot to, to what I, you know, the character can do. And um, you know, I, I think she's a lot, uh, in a lot of ways, she's more raw. She's not as as primpy as France as uh, Dawn Marie, excuse me. But uh, I think that that edge that she she brings, just naturally that she brings, is, is going to come across better with me, I think. And Dawn's a little primpier, and, and she's not as well schooled in the ring as, as Francine, as far as bumps and actual wrestling. And I know uh, Francine was actually trained as a wrestler, you know, or or not, not to, maybe not a, not to fully extent, but I do know she has had formal pro wrestling training. So in, in that sense, uh, you know, that I prefer uh, you know Francine over Dawn Murray. Okay, we've got uh, a couple of emails here. Um, this is asking, have any of the uh, major promotions tried to lure you um, of late, you know, in, while you were under contract with ECW? I mean, it, have you got any, in, I mean, I don't know if you got anything direct, but indirect, like uh, lines from people, kind of like, uh, you know, you can yeah, get this and this. I wish what? they would. I wish they would just for ego, but absolutely not. Really? <laughs> yeah, they don't put me over. Not a list. Anything. Any, anything on, uh, this is someone who's asking about H.C. Loke, who um, I've seen as a referee. I don't know, are you, do you have experience watching him wrestle? Like, what's his, because the guy says, I think he's a very good wrestler and be a welcome addition to the roster. About H.C. Um, Loke. Um, I know he's a good little wrestler. Um, you know, he uh, he works his butt off. He's ring, he does ring crew, and, you know, he's doing the young boy stuff. He's been trained as a wrestler. He is a wrestler, and uh, he can do some good stuff in there. And, uh, you know, and I think the, what he's doing right now is, is uh, just, just a gimmick. You know, he is a pro wrestler, and, uh, you know, I think uh, that's going to, the referee gimmick is going to develop eventually into a full time wrestler role. When that, that's going to happen, I don't know. Maybe when the, the company feels he's ready as a performer, but as of right now, he's, he's going to do the, the, you know, the tough guy referee role for now. Um, this is something from Richard Sullivan who says that there was a brief period that only lasted about one month in 1989 when the Midnight Express and Jim Cornette left WCW after a dispute with Jim Hearn. So I guess that means that Bobby Eaton w would not have had an uninterrupted reign in WCW that just recently ended, but uh, well, it's still 11 years. That's still a hell of a long time. That's a long time. Yeah, wow. Um, any, have, you, have you heard of any talk? I know it's not on the schedule of a West Coast Loop. You know, any shows uh, like... I mean, I know Paul's talked about Las Vegas. Yeah, we've talk, we, uh, I've even heard of Vegas for a pay-per-view. Um, uh, now, uh, you know, one time when Bubba Dudley was uh, still booking towns for us, uh, we we did have uh, Bakersfield, um, something in L.A. We had some towns actually penciled in and scheduled to go on, but uh, obviously that never materialized, and that was quite a while ago because Bubba obviously isn't with us anymore. But uh, when you know, I remember being in a room with those two and uh, them rambling off a couple of uh, you know California dates. But um, you know, I, I'm, I'm you know I I don't know why we haven't uh, you know whether it's a matter of time or whether they've got something in the works. But uh, you know, um, who, who, who your guess is I guess as good as mine. How about how about Canada, like Toronto or anything like that? Uh, I heard we're going to Toronto September 30th. I have a really? I mean, yeah, that's not a confirmed, confirmed date, but uh, I know uh, Lance had got, got some information for uh, the guy that books our towns now, Greg Bagarosi, and uh, and they've, uh, they've they've gotten the ball rolling, and uh, we may have even gone as far as booking the building. I'm, I mean, don't quote me on it. I, I cannot confirm that, but it, it, it is talks, and it, it has, you know, they have taken some steps to doing that, to going, you know, as far as work visas and the whole nine yards. We have taken some steps. Wow! Wow! Well, you looking forward to? Have you ever? Have you? Well, you must have worked in. in uh, well, I know you started in Calgary, and you must have worked some dates when uh, you were in WWF in uh, in Toronto. Ugh, I worked all the. I worked the coldest ice hockey rinks, the B towns, in the dead of winter with no heat for the WWF. And I remember wrestling Mantar, and I'll tell you, it was like I, I swear to you, it was thirty degrees in those buildings, and he would just kill me every night. He was just. Stiff. That. Oh, and I'll never forget it. Cornwall, Hamilton, London, Ontario, all those little towns with just a couple of, you know, not a couple hundred, maybe like a thousand people. But boy, yeah, I've, I've done my my ways around the, the Ontario area. <laughs> what, what, what is there any difference as far as like working? I mean, I think every audience is different. Do you, do you notice a difference between a Canadian audience and an American audience at all? Yeah, they're easier. 
They're much right. easier. They're much easier because they don't see it as much. We're very the Americans, the Americans. The, you know, you know, we're 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 very spoiled because now we have you know three promotions that on any given time will stop stop in your you know your city, you know, within a month. Like you know, in uh, Hartford, for example, you know, ECW is going to Hartford. Let's say, for example, on the 26th. I know uh, they're doing SmackDown in New Haven. Uh, you know, pretty much around the same time. So you know, the, the areas get spoiled as far as you know what what they're allowed to see and I know WCW comes to the area so uh, you know they, they're they very picky and choosy around here and uh, when, in Canada and then in other places that don't get it as frequent um, when, when they do get it boy they are rabid and you know Canadian fans have always been very good fans especially you know my favorite place to wrestle in Canada was Montreal Montreal had great fans